And now I'm going to take a cocktail stick and show you how you can create the effect of some lighter branches and tree trunks in the distance against a darker background by scratching out. And I'm going to use the tip of the stick and just sort of create that effect. If I press on with the stick a bit more at first, in fact, use, use it a bit more of the side of it. And then as I come up with the branches, just use the very point of the stick to get a much finer line. That looks more effective. And just the very point of the stick should just move enough paint away. The timing is crucial because if you do this too early, the colour just runs back in again. Too late and you just damage the paper, it won't scratch out. And we'll just leave that to dry. So now the background's dry, let's put in the silver birch tree. We need a couple of colours first, and I'm going to use the detailer brush. It'll be much easier to control what I'm doing now on this quite thin trunk and branches. I'm going to start by mixing some purple colour, using some ultramarine with a little touch of rose madder in it. I'm going to then make that slightly colder by adding a bit of Oriolin. And the other colour for this tree is a real rich dark brown. I'm going to take some uh, ultramarine, not much water in this, this has got to be quite a stiff mixture. I'm going to add some rose madder to it. This is going like the colour I mixed a moment ago. And then I'm adding Oriolin again to brown it. And that has got to be fairly thick. It's like the consistency of single cream though. Okay, I need a really clean brush now. We're going to coat the tree with clean water first of all. Working up from the bottom, just dropping in clean water. Try and do it quite quickly so you don't smudge any of your previous paint and cover the whole of the trunk with that clean water. For now, ignore the branches. Now let's take a little bit of that purple that we mixed and start to drop that in on the right hand side of the trunk. Just use the tip of the brush and drop it in and watch what happens. Try and judge how far it's spreading. We want to leave some white on the left hand side of the trunk where it's catching the light. Okay, now before that dries, get the rich dark on the brush. And again, sticking to the right hand side of the trunk, get that in. Again, we need to work before the background dries so that the, so the colours soften together and we get that sort of cylindrical look to it. That look that the trunk is actually rounded. Now we'll leave that to dry, but while it's drying, I've got a clean brush again, and let's take a branch now and just coat the whole branch in clean water, taking it right out of the top of the picture. Then just get the dark colour, we don't need the intermediate one now, we just get that dark mixture. And with the very tip of the brush, just touch that in to the damp background. It's drying very quickly so it's not staying damp for long. I'm going to need to, when I've dropped that in, I'm going to need to clean the brush and with a damp clean brush, just soften that in. Same at the other side here, I'm going to just wet the branch with clean water, then get the dark colour and drop it in, sticking with the colour to the right hand side of the branch. That into there and again soften it in with a damp clean brush. Okay now I'm going to take the liner writer brush which gives us the really fine branches Get some more of that dark colour and let's take a few branches, fine branches off this going right out and off at the top of the picture. They just take you out of the scene. Let's have one coming from the, the front of the trunk. And let's take a branch from the very front of the trunk coming outwards. It's got to get thinner and thinner as it goes across the paper. Put a little marking underneath it to make it look realistic. The background's dry enough now for me to take this de detailer brush and more of the dark colour and just put a few little marks in to give us the, the, those telltale marks where once there were branches on this silver birch. 
I've had to wait for it to dry to do this because it's that little bit of dry brushwork that helps. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry now. Now, because on, on the ground surrounding the bottom of the tree, I'm going to leave a lot of white paper to indicate snow. This doesn't really give us anything to pick out the light side of the trunk against that ground. So I've just got a bit of the orangey colour made of Oriolin and Rose Madder, and I've got the detailer brush, and I'm just going to brush some of that into the base of the tree. I'm using the detailer so I can be quite accurate about where I put it. And then a damp, clean brush, and fade that out as it goes up the tree. So it just gradually fades into the white. So that's the tree done. We need to look now at just a few little touches to finish off the scene. I've got some of that uh, dark brown mix that I used in the background and I've got the detailer brush. And just to break up this line where the background meets the, the foreground, I'm going to just make a few marks. I'll get the brush a bit drier so I'll get a bit of dry brush work, just to sort of break that area up a bit. Maybe indicate the odd post. It's just to try and sort of break it up and make it into a little scene. And I'm going to mix a bit of colour for some shadows now, just to round it off. Um, I'm going to add to the ultramarine a little touch of rose madder. Not too much, we don't want a vivid purple, just a touch of it. And then firstly, with the detailer brush, let's take some shadow from the tree, right across from the, the right hand side of the tree, out to the right, and break up the shadow, because it's not just the trunk that's casting a shadow, it's the branches as well. Then with the larger brush, load it up with that shadow colour, and let's put a bit of shadow right across the foreground to bring it forward. Sweeping horizontal strokes, it could almost be something not in the scene that's casting a shadow into it. And then straight away, clean the brush, take most of the moisture off so it's damp, not wet through, and just soften that shadow in a bit. And that's all we need to do to complete the scene. So let's just summarise what we've been looking at in this lesson. Always remember when you're painting your trees to paint from the ground upwards. As your paint starts to get drier and run out of paint, it helps you to get those finer lines. And remember, the best way to get those really fine lines is to use that liner writer brush. Don't be tempted because you've got the other brush in your hand to carry on too long with it. It's well worth swapping to the right tool for the job. Let's look also at those that scratching out with it to suggest those distant trees. If you do that too early while the paper is still too wet, the colour just runs back in again and, you don't, and, it, and it fails. If you wait too long when the paper's dry, you just end up scratching lumps out of the paper and not really achieving anything. The optimum time is when the paper has just started to lose its shine. It's quite a small window then to work in. And don't overdo it. Don't get carried away with those little effects. Keep having a look at what you've done and ask yourself, have I done enough? Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. Today's workshop is part of the Watercolour as if by Magic Beginners course. Six fantastic 20-minute workshops on DVD, now available to order from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.